This is a clear cut area and it's a lot of firewood here and I'm here to cut the load. But there's few safety things I want to talk about first. Never cut alone. Always have somebody with you. Don't use drugs and alcohol when you cut. Don't carry your kids and dogs with you. One thing, if you cut so you get tired, really sit down and if you, you should always carry something to drink also with you. And hard hat, that's a very good investment. Eye protection and ear protection. If you get further down, long sleeve shirt, safety pants, and a hard steel toe boots, thick leather. I have Kevlar in my boots and I have safety pants, but for casual user, a good thing is just a couple of chaps. Leggings, it's very easy to put on, slip on over your boots, tie it to your belt. And a pair of work gloves. And this, you see I have my trigger finger, like this I can close the glove. On the other hand I have the chains of protection in the front of the glove and I can close that. Should like to talk about chainsaw safety. And a low kickback bar and a low kickback chain. I have chain guard, so the chain break. I have a safety device here for to protect my right hand. I have also protection here if the chain break. About the ANSI standard here. See, I have green color chain and a green color bar and the green on the chainsaw here. That means that this chainsaw is dressed for casual user, for me to cut firewood. If it's yellow, that's for the professionals. Always before you start your chainsaw, read the chainsaw safety manual. Also, your instruction book for the chainsaw, because it's many things you can forget since you used your chainsaw last time. Maintenance on your chainsaw just after you have cut is definitely clean your filter. And uh, this is a good recommendation. Just use an old toothbrush because you can do a good job with it. You can do this thing a few times, but after that you need to take the filter off and clean it in soapy, soapy water. When you're ready with that, think about one net you have up here also, so you don't forget to clean that. Put these things back again, lock it up here, so. And one other place is just the air intake. It means that uh, if you get the airflow in it, cool the cylinder, and this is some places a lot of dirt stops in. Clean that. And when you get over to the chainsaw side of it, chain and bar here, always put a pair of gloves on because the chain is sharp and you can cut yourself, but also the bar is sharp on the side. So here I just take that off now. Take the bar and the chain off. Take the chain from the bar. And one important part here is just take a look on the chain so you don't have any crack in it. Now when I finish the chain, I go over to the bar. And just here, that's one part is important to clean here. So. And see to it your hole is open here so the oil can go out to the chain. Put the bar on the side, again back to the toothbrush, and here I can use that to clean stone cover. So, and also the side here. Take a look here, it looks clean and nice, and my brake works perfect, so. And now it's just to put it back again. 
bar on and my chain. Spoon cover. this and I shake ball and chain lift the bar up tighten knot so and now I'm ready to sharp my chain and when I do that I use the file and I have my 30 and the 35 degree and this type of chain here needs the 30 degrees angle I put the saw in a position so I can get good control over it and now I start to sharp. Always prepare a special place for fueling of your chainsaw. And think about to use mixed oil and in a special gas can that's our probe. The mixed oil should be 1 to 40 and the bar and chain oil need to be special also. And put the chainsaw in a position like this. Loose up. Use these tools for that. And uh, your gas can, don't forget to put this in here when you have used that. Because it, if it fall over, it could easily be fuel on the ground. And look here now, with this pipe here, how easy I can fill that chainsaw up here. So, and I close also this here and put it on the side. Now to the bar and chain oil. And when you have filled the chainsaw like this, even if it looks clean and nice here now, and I didn't overfill, if it is so you overfill, clean your saw before you start up. I should like to explain about the old type of felling first. And when I cut in the 50s, I just had a hand saw and I cut straight in and after that took an axe and cut away the piece here. But when the chainsaw arrived on the market, there was natural to just make a straight cut in and after that take a little from the top and do the back cut. But what really happens here I want to show you. See, if I now do the straight cut in here and take just a little piece from the top here, this is the opening I get. After that, when I start to cut from the back, take a look and see what happens here. Yep, when I get here now, I have one cut a little bit too far in here, the undercut. See what happens? Just already here, it starts to break. We get in trouble. Yeah, what happens here, either the tree stops here, you cut it off, or the hinge must break. At the best here, I meet exact these two cut. But still I'm in trouble. Now I have one other cut I want to show you. A cut is the name of humble cut. And that is done very much on the west coast to save fiber. Yeah, on really old grow, you save fiber, but on the second grow, you are going to be in real trouble. Look what happens here. Yeah, when you get in this position, something must break. Look here now, I have two hinges in here, like on a door. The only way to get these two hinges to work perfect is to do an open face felling. What means? At I, in this case, take the upper cut first. Yeah, when I do that, I have the line on the chainsaw here to line up perfect. I put my left foot behind the tree, the right foot on the up here, and now I have my head exact in right position. And I now go and start going to position, start to cut. And the really nice thing now at I can look in the uppercut and see that I meet absolutely perfect. Now, when I do my back cut, 
I just go in here so much that I can take my wedge. And I put the wedge in here, feed that little, and now I can cut all the way up to a position where I can see that the hinge is, in this case, just a little over an inch wide. I take my chains out and always think about put the chain brake on when you let the chains go on the ground. And after that, I take my ax and start to feed the wedge. When the tree comes in right position, it just take off. Never drop start your chainsaw. It happens way too many accidents with that. There's a couple of different starting techniques I want to show you. But whatever you do, always put the chain brake on. In this case, I like to show you how you start the chainsaw on the ground. When you do that, when you put the chains on the ground, see to it the bar, no debris under it. You take your left hand and put the thumb in under the bow, release the stop here, put your foot in, and pull the rope. Like this. Always move in the position before you release the chain, chain brake. But uh, before I move in, I will show you one more starting technique. Again, the chain brake on, release the stop, put your hand on the front handle with the thumb under. But in this case, I start the chainsaw up in the air. I put the back handle in between my legs and lock that here. Take my starting rope, pull that out, and just pull the saw like this. Now when I cut my uppercut here, I was using this line here to aim the tree up there. I cut the first cut in here 50 degrees. So deep into the tree, so I reach 80% of the diameter of the tree. Now I just can turn around here, look into the uppercut, and see when I 40 degrees from the below meet exact here. You see, the piece I cut away here should be 70 degrees, but 90 is the perfect one. And both of the cuts meet perfect here. Now when I do the back cut, see to it you use the pulling chain and use your dogs. So you walk over to the other side, you try to be, and you should be, even with a V here, or so much over. That's the perfect cut from the back. Now everything is ready and I will be using this brake bar here to push this tree over with. So I can just put the brake bar in here, in the back cut. And just because that I have the 90 degree opening here, and I have now created a hinge, I could see that I left so much wood there, I can see that I have the same amount of wood here, and I know I cut straight. So the hinge will look like this. So now I go in the back of the tree here. In this case, I'm using my legs. So I just go down like this and straight up my leg like this. Now I'm ready to cut my firewood. I will just show you what tools I'm using. One ax for sure and a brake bar. That's a tool I can use if I have a tree leans a little bit back. I can cut halfway through, put it in, finish my cut up to the hinge, and after that, go behind that and just push the tree over. That's a good tool. Also, just yes, now, I have my professional tool belt on, as you can see. And uh, you may don't have that, but a few of these tools I definitely recommend. One thing is just a plastic wedge, 
This is a good tool. Range, yeah, tool brush to clean my chainsaw with, the file. Uh, one special thing I definitely like to take up with you is just the first aid kit. I have all the necessary thing I need here to take care of a minor cut. But I have one thing I definitely like to show you. That is, if I can get it here, a plastic mirror. You see, it, does, it doesn't break, but one main thing. You see, if you get something in your eye, you can very easily clean it. But the basic thing, it could happen. It is shame just jump off, hit you here, and then you start to really bleed. Uh, one thing is not, don't take a shirt or anything and put on like that. Just take a close look. Where does it bleed? Put your finger around it, take it, and close that and really see to that it is closed. Leave everything here, carry your mirror with you, and get into the truck and have somebody, your friend, to drive you to the hospital. This is a fantastic spot for firewood cutting. Fine on the ground, I can really drive my truck in here. Very exciting. But as a professional cutter, there's a few things I really should like you to look at when you start up. Uh, first of all, think about that this is a logged area. That means that the big trees have been felled in here. That means also that trees have broken branches. And you can see in many locations up here that they are broken branches. Some of them are just ready to fall down. Watch them very carefully. Yeah, from distance I can see it. That tree leans to the right. And no debris can come down at me when I walk under it. The vine grows to that tree. I must watch that. There's no wind. From this position I can see it. The whole top leans in that direction. But uh, I have an opening. So I like to fell it in this position. And when I do that, I need an escape route. That will be my escape route. So the back, back cut I have done now is even with the face cut. And now I can see that I have a hinge crossover like this. But uh, before I made that one, when I was halfway in, because of the heavy back leaning here, I took up my wedge and I put that one in. So now when I finish my cut, I can take my chainsaw out and place that on a safe spot. And now is it just to punch that wedge to the tree goes over. And when you do that, see to it you get a good position here and hit that one. Wait a little to hit it next time. Just so much that the tree can react between this. I started with my normal face cut, 50 degree from the top, 40 from below, get both of the two cut to meet. After that, plunge cut in the middle, all the way through the trunk. So I took the heart out. Now I had a couple of inch of wood on each side, holding the tree in the same position. When I move on the back of the tree, started up the chainsaw and cut in the same cut all the way into my hinge. And the tree goes in the right direction without to split. If it is a situation where you want the firewood and you really want to cut this one, if you cut, can cut the bend out of it, 
from this position, lower and your shoulder. This is a preferable position. If not, if it's high up here, you must go to the top. Clean everything around it so you can see the, where it is and release the tree from the top. But what I will be showing here is just to cut the bend out of this one. Yeah, I can see the bow here. And if I hit in the middle here, what will happen? Yeah, it will straighten it out. So I start my chainsaw and I put full speed on the chain and feed slowly and let the pressure go out. Of when you limit tree like this, put your both hand on the chainsaw with the thumb under the bow and get a really stable grip on the chainsaw. Move into the limb, put the bottom of the saw against the limb, release the brake, put full speed on the chain, feed soft and slowly. When the limb is ready, if it's long distance to the next one, put the brake on when you move between them. Bucking of a tree. And I just start with a little cut from the below and after that the rest from the top. And it worked fine as you see. It's, and after that I start to cut the rest from the top. Proper lifting technique. Use your leg when you lift. Be careful so you don't use your back. I use a tong here. I go down in this position, and now it's just I lift with my leg, and now I can drag the piece behind me in this direction. If I now move into a hole or something, I have a break behind me, as I don't have if I carry the piece. Also, when you lift these small pieces, use your leg like this, I already have my chainsaw and all the other stuff in the truck. Put the gas in here. Watch pieces like this so they don't fall over or fall off the truck and create some accidents. See that everything is solid. I have two more pieces to put on. So. And also my garbage, let's put that in the back. Be sure you have a firewood permission before you start to cut. When you finish, really clean up the area. Tree tops, branches, as you have dropped into ditches and roads, bring them back. Also the garbage you have left around you, pick that up and take that with you out. 